What's up guys, Reckless here and welcome to Guardian Watcher. So, in today's video, I wanted to go over my first impressions of the Curse of Osiris Expansion 1. Warning, if you have not started your own adventure on the Curse of Osiris, then I suggest you click off this video because there will be spoilers ahead. So, just sit back and enjoy the gameplay. Now before everyone freaks out and throws in their two cents, let me remind you that the Curse of Osiris was an expansion and not a full DLC release like the Taken King was. With that said, things like a new raid wasn't at all going to happen and I don't see it happening for the second expansion either. Am I glad that they added the raid layer? Yes. But I'm not so happy that the raid layer wasn't available on the release of the expansion like Bungie had made it out to be. Am I glad that character and power level caps went up? Yes. Am I glad that we got new weapons in the Curse of Osiris? Yes. And I'm sure a lot of people are happy as well. With the Curse of Osiris expansion, many good things had come, as in the return of certain Destiny 1 exotics like the Hemel Saint 14, Ophidian Aspect, and everyone's favorite hunter exotic, the Chernobyl's Valve that many people are going to hate due to certain grenades like the Axiom Bolt, Skip Grenades, and many others being buffed with the release of the expansion. Speaking of buffs and nerfs, let's talk about them a little. Now, I am completely indifferent with the changes done to the Karnstein armlets, and I have never actually felt this way before about an exotic that has been changed, but I will save all of that for another video. When it comes to weapon tuning, unfortunately, the sandbox team hit the scout rifle archetype and not Mida specifically. Bungie slightly reduced the aim deflection of high caliber rounds of scout rifles and auto rifles. They also reduced the effectiveness of aim assist at higher ranges for scout rifles. Now, do I agree with these changes? No, and that's because an actual scout rifle is supposed to be good at mid to long ranges. IRL, you have auto rifles shooting semi-auto at the lowest range and a sniper rifle which is the best at long ranges. The sweet spot for scout rifles, and yes, they are an actual real thing, is the middle of the two. And I would definitely do an update on an entire sandbox update in the next video because there is a heck of a lot of information that many people still don't know. I know a lot of players in PvP wanted the Mita to get nerfed to the ground. However, I am not one of them. I've used Mita in Destiny 1 for over three years and I feel that it was time for it to shine. Many would agree, and then all of the haters would disagree and try to argue with you and say things like, it's a new weapon, you lack skill if you use Mida, blah de blah blah, whatever, nobody cares. My friend Joey would look at you and just say, wang. Now, it's the meta. Yes, Mida is meta. You either play it or you don't. If you're gonna cry every time you get killed by a weapon that is in the meta, then maybe you shouldn't play the game at all. The meta will always change, and maybe, just maybe, you should change with it if you want to be competitive. Not everyone has the same playstyle and to each his own. But we've seen the Mitre reign supreme since day one of Destiny 2 and then even more in Trials of the Nine, so let's just let it shine a little bit longer. However, some things in the expansion were a little disappointing, and I'm not just talking about the raid lair. For example, Osiris leaving and going back into the infinite forest at the end of the campaign. A lot of people were hoping that he was actually going to be a vendor and come back to the vanguard, which obviously did not happen. Next, we'll say the two new strikes that were integrated into the story, which was a nice touch, I might add, but then when you were doing them as a heroic strike, it really didn't feel any different from the story version, except that I could do it with randoms if I went into the heroic strike playlist. Yeah, there were a few minor differences, but nothing that made me go, wow, I like what they did with that. Now the return of the Heroic Strike playlist was definitely refreshing. I actually have a reason to go to see Zavala at the tower now. Leveling up was pretty easy in the beginning, constant progression was always there, but things did slow a little down when you reached power level of 320. I remember on release day of the Curse of Osiris, I played for about a little bit over 20 minutes before running off to make videos and some of my clan shot up from a 305 power level to like a 313 within a few hours. But naturally, I came back to surpass them. Sorry, Spikes. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm a, like 100%, the grind is real. As for ornaments being implemented into the game for armor, I feel that Bungie kinda slacked off on it. Instead of giving us new armor, they were more like, here, use the current armor you have and put an ornament on it. 
I really think that Bungie should have given us new armor and also gave us the option to put an ornament on it. However, this is just a few of the things that were going through my mind as I was playing through the Curse of Osiris for the first few days, and neither myself, my clanmates, friends, family, nor you guys have the time to hear every single thing that I was thinking about. Overall, the expansion I feel was a success as an expansion, but when it comes to the first real DLC, and no, I am not talking about expansion 2, there are a lot more expectations from myself and the community as a whole. And that fellow guardians brings us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like and share it. Feedback is always appreciated. If you guys have any ideas for a future video, then let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. And remember, less guns doesn't mean less crime. And I will see you guys next time.